Hi, this is Alan with Bay Marine Supply and BayMarineSupply.com and we're here with a Sterling Pro Charge Ultra battery charger. These are uh, primarily for marine and RV use, although we do see them in commercial applications as well. And uh, since we're talking about this, we'll also be talking about the Pro Mariner Pro Nautic series, which is the same as the Sterling. The uh, differences are the labels and the manual and the box that they come in, and that's about it. Uh, the short story is that they were co-engineered and are co-manufactured. The uh, Sterling brand was originally in the UK and the EU, and ProMariner was in the US, North American market. That uh, agreement between them went by the wayside about five years ago, and Sterling moved into the U.S. market. They're based out of Maine with their warehouse and uh, offices there. Okay, and what we're going to look pretty closely at is going to be the latest iteration of these, which are CEC compliant, that's California Energy Commission compliant, and that has some energy saving features that we'll talk about a little bit later. On the Sterling side, uh, they're recognizable with the red band at the bottom compared to the gray. On the Pro Mariner, as far as we know, they're going to remain gray. We're just seeing a few of the uh, new ones coming out. Uh, this is the spring of uh, 2015. We expect they'll be rolled out by the end of the year. Uh, it's just the more popular models that have a little higher turnover like this 40 amp unit that are available with the uh, with the new compliant uh, rating. All right, let's start by looking at the case. The uh, height is about 10 inches. It's about eight and a half inches wide and it is roughly three and a half inches high. The outputs on these uh, on the Sterling line is from 10 to 60 amps at 12 volts and that's in 10 amp increments 10 amp 20 amp 30 amp for 24 volts it has a 20 amp and a 30 amp version the pro uh, pro mariner line has a 15 amp as well to add to that now the larger units which is the 50 and the 60 and the 12 volt and then the 30 amp and the 24 volt is about two inches taller okay let's open it up On this side is the AC input. Uh, these are clamps. Uh, wire goes in, screw them down. You don't have to wrap the wire uh, around the screw, anything like that. Pretty standard stuff, easy enough to deal with. On this side, DC output with a common negative and usually three positive legs coming out. Uh, these are six millimeter studs or uh, one, one quarter if you're uh, North American. And uh, that is on the 30 amp and up units. On the 20 amp and below, they have clamps that are very much like the uh, AC side. Uh, you don't need a lug on the end of your wire. You put it in, screw it down. Uh, they fit uh, number 10 wire pretty well. Uh, number 8 will fit in there as well. And the uh, 10 amp charger does not have the three legs. It only has the two legs. And then the, uh, the 15 amp uh, for the Pro Mariner version or the 20 amp on up for the uh, Sterling units are all three legs. Up here are two sockets. One's for the remote uh, console and the other is for the battery temperature sensor. All of the chargers come with battery temperature sensors just like that one. Uh, they're not optional, they're included, and you'll really want to use them. Uh, the charger needs to evaluate the battery temperature and it adjusts the voltage accordingly. And uh, in extreme cases, it may need to back down on the current to avoid overheating the battery. Uh, all good quality chargers these days that are, you know, over about 20 amp or so uh, should be including a battery temperature sensor. You can also reduce the output manually. Uh, from the panel here. Uh, you can bring that down to 90%, 80%, so on, of full power. A and you might want to do that, for example, if you've removed some battery capacity from your system, or if you want to get a larger charger now and you expect to add more batteries later on, 
uh, you can you can limit the output. Make sure that the charger is not uh, going to overheat your batteries. Okay, let's fire this thing up. Fan comes on strong when we start it, uh, then it backs down. Uh, first thing it does is go through the self test. And there we go. So the main readouts, uh, besides the fact that it has power, are uh, system voltage and the amperage uh, flowing right now. Uh, we'll see the stage that it's in. It's jumped straight to absorption because it was just on and it remembers that it was already in absorption mode so it's going to continue on there. We have uh, the different battery types. There's 11 presets plus a custom that, uh, that you can set uh, for battery type. It defaults to sealed lead acid because that's a nice safe one. It's not going to do too much damage to any battery if the installer uh, failed to reset it. We can change that by holding down the setup button for about six or seven seconds. We have this flashing, shows the uh, the absorption voltage and the float voltage for any particular setting. As we move through the settings we'll see different results up there. And we can lock that in. And there we go. We are now set for flooded. Okay, and I want to go over the power save function on these newer chargers that are just coming out. That's the CEC, or California Energy Commission standard, though Oregon's already signed on, and Washington is debating it, and uh, this Washington State is debating it, and the Department of Energy is taking comments. So I think we'll see more of that. That's as of May 2015. I'll post a link uh, to a page on our website for more information. But, in a nutshell, the charger will cycle in and out of a suspend mode if the battery is not used for three days, and there will be no effect on the charger at all if it sees five amps of use uh, in any 72 hour period. So uh, I want to stress I don't see a, a problem with this. I think it's uh, actually a pretty good thing. For more details, uh, again, go to the website. I won't uh, waste our time on that here. So that said, uh, the charger will function as a power supply even if there's no battery attached. That's a pretty nice feature if you need it but it's incompatible with the power save function. So we can switch the unit between battery charger mode and power supply mode and in the power supply mode it's still a charger. As a matter of fact it operates exactly like the pre-CEC models. So one way to change that over is to press all three buttons here and get a recycle going on it. Uh, I find it easier just to shut the power off, bring it back on, and we're going to look up here and we're going to see either BC, like that, or PS, like that. And PS is power supply, BC is battery charger, and all we have to do is reset that, uh, uh, choose which we want, let it go through the self-test, and that will take. There we go. So that's... Uh, that's a persistent setting. The charger will retain that setting uh, until you change it again. So here we're in the BC battery charger energy save mode. If we change it over to power supply it's just like these were before they got the CEC standard. So pretty easy to deal with. Okay, I have the remote hooked up here. And it comes with 30 feet of cable with phone type plugs, so it goes through a small hole pretty well. And except for putting the charger into standby, it's, it's all about the readout. Shows the info that's on the charger face, uh, the voltage and to the uh, amperage and so on and so forth. But also uh, the battery temp, the charger temp, the time remaining on absorption, uh, the percent power output, that sort of thing. It can be recessed into your panel. Uh, 
uh, here, or it can be surface mounted. There's a skirt that goes on here, so that can be uh, mounted to any flat surface without cutting into it. It's a uh, it's a nice to have. It's certainly not required. It, it can be handy, uh, especially if you do not have any other uh, charge monitor or battery monitor in your system. It'll let you know uh, what the uh, what the current flow and what the voltage is. That's it for now. If you have any questions on these or any other components or any comments or even any abuse, get a hold of us at baymarinesupply.com. We're happy to hear from you. We answer the phone, we answer our emails, and thanks so much for watching.